You're watching News at Prime. Thank you for staying with us. ESCOM will now have to convince the nuclear regulator that it has the financial and human resources capacity to legally keep the Kolbrug nuclear power station running. This is according to the recent rules published by Minerals and Energy Minister Gwede Mantashe. According to the new rules, the move is to help make a safety case of the extension. On top of showing it has enough money, ESCOM will be required to provide an overall safety assessment for Kolbrug and explain what refurbishment or other work would be required to keep generating electricity. To speak to us about this, we are joined by energy expert Ted Blom. Ted, a very good evening. Just your thoughts immediately to that uh, introduction. Okay, well, I mean, uh, at, the, at the price of 20 billion odd rand, uh, it's actually a bargain. Uh, because uh, as you've just seen in the last week, uh, the government is prepared to spend 10 billion rand uh, a year. Uh, to bring in uh, 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 these power barges, and, and then we don't even own them. Uh, so, uh, no, I think uh, if Kubrick is in good state, I mean, the, the big concern from my side and the public side is that uh, Eskom has lied so much to us over the last 10 years. Or, I mean, it's unbelievable that they're still around uh, with all the lies and corruption. Um, uh, we need a, an independent public body to go and do an assessment. Uh, we can bring in experts of our own and just specify the public that this thing is actually uh, fit to run. Because if it's not fit to run, then we're just throwing money down the tube. Uh, there have been lots of rumors in the past. I've had rumors that are passed to me about the foundations of the building. Uh, I've had those uh, quashed uh, by a satisfactory answer. There are now concerns about the containment building. If that is broken, then we're wasting our time. Then we don't want to actually carry on with this project. But if everything's fit and we're ready to run, I see no reason why we shouldn't continue with the extension of the life of Kuba. So 20 billion, what does that actually buy us? Well, the 20 billion is, the, I think, the uh, recertification costs of uh, extending the license to operate by another 20 years. So uh, an international panel from the International Atomic Agency, I assume, would come across and they would do, uh, they would need to take the unit down offline. And, and I don't see that in ESCOM's outages. In fact, if ESCOM could just be a bit more transparent and send me the outages, then I can help the public uh, assess what the future is, whether there's more or severe load shedding or not. But nevertheless, put that aside. Uh, they need to do a, a proper, a, a thorough assessment as to uh, whether uh, Kuberg is fit for purpose. And uh, I would really want to call on the government to uh, take the public into their confidence and have somebody of, of, of proper reputation and capability uh, to be part of that panel or join that panel just to, uh, just to be the public representative. And then we, we, will, we will solve a lot of problems uh, right up front. Uh, so, yes, uh, that's basically the licensing cost. We, uh, in, in car terms, a roadworthy check. That's what we're paying for. And what about ESCOM's uh, financial and human resources capability to keep it going? Certainly to keep it going safely. Okay, so ESCOM has lost a lot of uh, staff from its uh, nuclear department over the years. Uh, they seem to have been able to uh, maintain some sort of uh, capability. Uh, I mean, in fact, uh, uh, from a numbers point of view, it's actually pathetic at ESCOM because uh, they've now got 14 people uh, running uh, Kuberg uh, as, as opposed to one person uh, previously. Uh, so uh, my big concern there would be the quality of the training of the people, uh, not the numbers. I mean, they've got uh, 20,000 many, too many people uh, around ESCOM. But it's the quality of the people. That's what's critical in, in, in this instance. Now, the expectation that ESCOM will go to the National Nuclear Regulator uh, in order to make an application to keep it running for a few more years, or at least another 20 years, what is the NRR likely to expect from ESCOM? Yeah, uh, so uh, I think uh, the NNR uh, is supposed to be the regulator for nuclear uh, projects. And, and they're supposed to have uh, adhered to the International Atomic Energy uh, Guidelines and Regulations. So in, in, in effect, uh, their procedures and templates should be uh, identical uh, to the international standards. I myself am not con convinced that the NNR is politically uh, separated from the government. Uh, there's been a lot of political meddling at, at the NNR in the past uh, 10 or so years. And you've seen it by court cases, labor issues, and so on. Uh, the NNR should be ab above uh, 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 any dispute or above any suspicion of being uh, inca in incapacitated or, or, or corrupt or, 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 or incompetent. 
Uh, and really, that's where the test is. And that's where I don't have a car. I don't have a line of sight as to how competent they are. I had previous connections with or, or line of sight with the NNR, uh, but it's become very opaque in the last 10 years. And perhaps that's where the, the journalists and news bodies in this country really need to focus and make sure, because you are the public watchdog, uh, watchdog in this instance, and you may need to make sure that the whoever is there is competent, is not in incorruptible, and will do a fair assessment in, uh, 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 in doing the roadworthy on Kubo. Now, this opacity that you speak about around NNR, do you think it's deliberate? Is it a cover-up of something? Uh, look, there, there have been issues. Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, there's uh, a, a couple of kilograms of enriched material that's still missing. Uh, if my memory serves me correct, it's about 600 kilograms. Now, that's enough to make a nuclear bomb, or several. So uh, there are, are issues with the NNR. Uh, um, uh, there's also been leakages at Perandaba that have not been properly treated as far as I, I, I'm aware. Um, so yes, uh, that's why I say, uh, I think what we need to do, you and me and, and, and the rest of the journalists uh, and TV news professions in this country, is we need to actually go and scrutinize the NNR because therein lies the key as to whether Kuburg is actually roadworthy or is going to be corrupted to be made look, look as if it's roadworthy or, or, or any other option. So that is, that is the guts of the thing. And I think um, it's a fair call by yourselves and uh, the population of South Africa that uh, the NNR be held up uh, and have be held accountable and that we actually scrutinize pro that properly. Uh, and, and that hasn't been done in the past. Final thoughts. Design life ends in three years. Is it safe to extend? Uh, by and large, uh, these, these uh, uh, units uh, around the world uh, are, are pretty uh, well designed from a redundancy point of view. Um, uh, obviously, the technology that we're talking about now, Kubrick is a Generation 2 uh, power station. Worldwide, we're talking about Generation 4 power stations. I don't think another Kubrick will be built in this country because uh, uh, far cheaper nuclear, uh, small, bed, uh, small uh, uh, based uh, uh, nuclear generators of between 50 and 200 megawatts are actually available. They're much quicker to build. They're much safer. They're low pressure. They're not water-cooled. They're helium-cooled. Uh, so they're much less dangerous and so on. So I think this is the end of an era. Uh, whether if Kuba gets a uh, license, relicensed, or roadworthy, as I call it, um, uh, that uh, that will be the last time, and uh, it'll probably be, as I said, the last time a, a legacy uh, unit uh, will appear on the African continent. Uh, the technology has moved on, like with the uh, uh, computer technology, jet engine technology, everything has moved on. And this uh, technology is uh, 1970s technology, so it's more than 50 years old. It's nearly as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, lovely speaking to you. That was energy expert Ted Blom.